Hello everyone, my name is Bill Sepulveda, K5LN, and your avid CW nut. Thanks for allowing me this opportunity to share with you my love for this great language called Morse code. As the second part of this Morse code journey, we'll be discussing the evolution of the key, what's available today to learn this great language, and basic CW operations. In this slide, we see a few of the straight keys available today from the well-known J38 to many different manufacturing types. In some parts of the world, these types of keys are known as pump keys. Ah, the bug, a major breakthrough for the telegraph operator in the late 1800s, who wound up with glass wrist, or what's commonly known today as corporal tunnel syndrome. These keys have become great collector's items and have a mystique to draw people to acquire and use them. Using the device takes finesse and lots and lots of practice. But boy, do they look great on the operating table. And when used properly, are some of the greatest sounding devices. The side swiper, or single function paddle, is a unique key which uses different form of sending and has a unique sound. Its hookup is a two-wire connection to the radio, like a straight key. Operating examples of this type of key may be found on YouTube, and it's mostly used in Europe and because of its sending style requires a lot of hand movement. The single lever paddle may look like a side swiper. However, its hookup is a three wire connection to an external keyer or radio with a built in keyer. It's used like a bug, but with the DAWs sent automatically. This is a good choice when transitioning from a bug to a keyer. However, it doesn't have the squeeze paddle capability for alternating elements. The iambic lever paddle gives me the most enjoyable operation of any paddle, with the least amount of movement of the hand. Its hookup is also three-wire connection to an external keyer or radio with a built-in keyer. This paddle is operated with the index finger and thumb and allows for the maximum usage of today's electronic keyers and their iambic capabilities but we'll leave the iambic sending thing for another discussion. The ham fest, a place where someone may find a collection or two of these great devices. If you're lucky, a place where you can find almost any configuration of key, bug, or paddle from the 1800s to today. Here are two examples of keys for the ultimate CW operator who loves to use a bug, straight key, or paddle with a keyer. The ultimate triple, not only gives the operator the total flexibility, but is an impressive sight when sitting in the operating position. The second key is from a good friend and great bug operator who had this configuration custom made. So as far as keys go, there is no limit to what one may find. However, it may become a little overwhelming to make the right decision for the individual's goal. Now, let's move on to the electronic keyers. As far as I can find in my limited library, the electronic keyers have been around for a very long time, as shown on page 267 of the 1948 ARRL Amateur's Handbook. They may be an earlier configuration of the tube type keyer, but my library only goes back to 1948. The second configuration is a later rendition of the tube type keyer and a homemade paddle made from two straight keys. In today's amateur radio adventure, we're fortunate to have many different configurations of keyers, which makes sending great fun. Well, at least to me. Some others may not feel the same way. But from an inexpensive kits to the top of the line keyers, they're all on the internet and a fit for all budgets and levels of functionality. Now, to learn this language, and how does one learn this CW thing? There are different methods to learn this language. One is what I call, and with all due respect, slow code, which is between 5 and 16 words per minute. There are many different suppliers, such as the Gordon West CDs and others on the Internet, which will start the individual with the slower speeds. There are also organizations on the Internet which support this method and the preservation of the speed, which has a large following of new hams. This is great for the folks who enjoy sending the language at the slower speeds, 
To some, that's their passion, and I support that 100%. And I wish them great fun and operating success, because that's what it's all about. The other method is what I call the New Age. And again, with all due respect, where the language is learned at 20 words per minute. If you don't have 20 or 30 years to build up receiving and sending skills and working yourself out of bad habits, may I recommend finding a local class that'll teach the language at 20 words per minute. Learning at this speed requires great attention to details and a different set of tools. The straight key will no longer be the tool of choice. At these speeds, knowledge is required and can only be gained by an experienced Elmer. It's exciting when you learn the secrets of easy Morse code sending and you find yourself thinking and sending words. Look for this subject on the internet and you'll find topics not found anywhere else. Before we finish, let's cover a few basic CW operations. So for those who are not aware, and just like many other amateur radio gentlemen's agreements, there are also some CW operating basics that should be implemented in the daily CW operations. First, we must pay attention when calling a station. As a minimum, send their call once followed by your call twice when replying to a station calling CQ. Just because you copied their call after they sent it many times and his signal is 10 over S9 on your radio doesn't necessarily mean he hears you the same way. So get into a good habit of sending your call twice when responding to a CQ. Second, in the initial contact information, make sure you send the RST, QTH, and name two times. This is important for the log, and you never know when the QSB gremlins may be in the atmosphere. Third, when sending your QTH, please don't send East Texas or Eastern PA. Give them the name of your city and abbreviate the state. Again, it's a logging thing and the other station getting the right information. Just remember, not everyone uses a computer log. Fourth, when ending a transmission, always send the other station's call followed by your call. It's just another good habit and a way to inform the other station that you're now turning it back to them. Everyone should be aware that we are supposed to identify every 10 minutes, right? So, get used to doing it unless you are using the break method signified by the pro sign Bravo Kilo for a quick break for the other station to answer a question. But if this type of conversational CW continues with the questions going back and forth, don't forget to identify every 10 minutes. Fifth, before calling CQ and starting a conversation, make sure that you check for a clear frequency by sending QRL three times with a long pause between each QRL. For those that are not aware, there is what is called a dead zone or you will not hear other stations and there just might be someone on the frequency having a QSO that you cannot hear. Or maybe it's the band conditions and you're not hearing some other signals. Check before you start a CQ. Finally, show some respect to the other operator and answer their CQ at the same speed they are sending. Never answer a station at a slower speed. Maybe they want to practice at a higher speed to work on their skills. Plus, there are plenty of frequencies where people will be sending at your skills. Answer them and have a great time. Or, call CQ at the speed you want to practice to expand your skills. So if you're a member of a radio club, ask the officers to start a CW class. If they don't know how to do it, tell them to send me an email. I'm good on QRZ and I'll send them my course so they can learn how to teach it. Or contact Gordon West for his CW teaching and learning courses. Or check out the CW Ops CW Academy to sign up for one of their online classes. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for allowing me to share this short segment of my love for this great language. And I look forward to hearing many more CW operators joining us on the air. Most of all, have fun with amateur radio. And if you're not already, Get radioactive and enjoy all the aspects of this great hobby. 73s.